Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one. It is Thursday, October the 11th, the year 2018. Let's talk trading. Filter that. And yesterday, I did filter this. And so today, we're going to talk about filtering that. Yesterday, talked about not filtering trades. In other words, once you've decided that you have a method, and this is, you know, what your entry trigger is, you, you don't filter beyond that. And so you have to realize that when you take a trade, that is a filter in itself. Because you were at one state, weight state, and then something happened that you recognized and it put you into now a position state. You entered a position, whether it be long or short, or both for that matter, on the platforms that allow you to hedge. And how did you come to that conclusion? Well, you made comparisons, you analyzed things, and you said, hey, because of X, I am going to enter the trade. So that's what we're going to work on today. For a little bit here so i've been meaning to put up a uh, chart showing the range or a frequency with the frequency distribution of range but there's something very important that we have to do We have to make sure we use our money and risk management, right? Before we continue, that's like the first step. That before we enter that position stage, either by buying or shorting an instrument, we have to make sure we have used our money and risk management. Now, back to frequency distribution range. As you can see here, I've got this thing loaded up with lots of bars. But let's just uh, think about it. We got 24 hours a day. We've got five days in a week, right? So if you do the math, you get 120. So... Let's look at 120 bars worth or a week's worth of data, right? Or should we just look at one the last 24 hours? Yeah, let's see. Let's look at the last 24 hours. Because when we look go and look at the buy zone, hopefully it will become apparent why we did that. Maybe I should put this on the buy zone. chart okay before i get too far out in the weeds let's come back we're going to look at the range why because you know a lot of people say oh well if you get in there you're going to get whipsawed around blah 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 well that's only if the range if if the price is within you know plus or minus 10 of the open but some of these big ranges may have occurred may have occurred outside that open. So over the last 24 hours, you can see here we had a big bar over 40, 6 over 30, 12, you know, 20 or more. So we've had some pretty big bars there, right? So if we go back and we find the buy zone chart. Oh, I got it right on the first time. You can see, where did these bars occur? Well, here's one right here. It went short and then pulled back, turned around and went long. Let's, let's find these big bars. Okay. Okay, there was a 33 pip bar that would not have wiggled you out of the trade. Now, technically, you would have gone into this trade and you may have gotten cut here. 
that's a possibility. You may have lost your 20 pips or 10 pips, however you set your stop. So that was one possibility. But here you had an entry and a winner, entry and a loser, entry and a winner. If you took this trade, there was a winner. And so if you used any other biases, such as trading towards the pivot point until it is hit, this trade right here would have been filtered out. But that is something that you would be doing as part of your trading method. You're saying until price hits pivot point, I don't want to go against it. I'm going to be biased. Just like in a gap situation, you want to trade towards the previous close until it's closed. That you can consider a filter, but that's a special case. It's not like we're using some squiggly to say only if it's above the 50 EMA on this um, chart period and it's below the 200 on another chart period or whatever, the, however the squigglies uh, come up with, with their entries. But that's just... Um, what they do. But I'm not really concerned about what they do. So once again here, we're using our knowledge of how price ranges to show that these buy zone trades are viable trades. Now, that was at 24. Let's look at what happens if we take this up to 120 last five days. You can see things change slightly. All of a sudden, we've got more numbers down here. We've got a couple of really big bars here. Maybe it's this guy right here. Okay. So you can see here, that with the Euro Yen, that's what we're looking at here, you know, we have an average range of 22, but I don't like averages. I like to look at the frequency distribution. So 41% of the time, you're going to be 20 to 29. 33% of the time, you're going to be 10 to 19. So you can see here in an hour on the Euro Yen, there are pips to be made. What, seven? percent at a time, 8% at a time, it's going to be less than 10. So once again, you can see how profitable you can be trading a simple method. Now, if we take this and expand it, let's go back, or let's just stay right here. Uh, no, let's not stay there. Let's look at this high minus open. But let's shift it to the hourly chart. And these open dots. Huh. I need to put in a turn that indicator off. But that's okay. We can see here, when you look at the open of each hour, and you look at the frequency distribution, high minus open, 55% of the time it's less than 10. But that's just high minus the open. And then open minus the low, 55% of the time, it's less than 10. So what that tells you is if you take a buy zone trade 
that there's a 55% chance you're not going to hit a 10 or 20 pip stop. So you're going to be in the game. And if you, you can see here, what, 85% of the time you're not going to hit hit the, uh, the stop on your short, a 20 pip stop, and what, 81% of the time. So basically, 8 out of 10 times, or 4 out of 5 times, you're not going to hit that stop when you enter the trade if you use a 20 pip stop on that first hour. So that's why all those people talk about, well, you know, you get whipsawed. No, filter that is what I say. And you can see statistically, it just doesn't happen. So let's breeze through here real quickly. You can see here we're still within the candle body on the monthly. Weekly, we're still below 68 pips off of the low. On the daily, we entered the upper wick zone here. Actually, we uh, broke through the lower wick zone and then came, turned right back around and went up. And you can see that we are now in the upper wick zone, 100 pip range. One, two, three, only four over 100 so far. And the yen, dollar yen, only 44 pips. We've already looked at the buy zone, rat zones, as you can see here, right at the 130 triple O. So you've got a couple of reasons to short and one reason to go long there just to trade that price action. And we hit took out that pivot. We saw that before. We still have these three missed pivots. Price action, three at the bottom, green at the line long. One at the top, red at the line short. One at the bottom, green at the line long. Two at the top, red at the line short. once again or we can just trade candle color at the line and you can see once again profitable looking at those opens we talked about the daily open you can see right here the distance prices traveled away from the open so if it's 10 or more and you took that trade you can see right here the profits you could be sitting in so actually, you could almost say, well, if I go long at the buy zone, leave, let it be. If I go short, let it be and see what happens. Wick zone, price doesn't like staying in the wick zone unless the wick zone is really big like this one. So it might have a hard time leaving it here. It just cut through because it was so small. But here we entered and exited for a nice profit. And we've got the holo, as you can see, put in a couple hours ago. And we've already exited at inventory reduction bars. We've uh, got a trigger here. Looks like it hit it. So there's the long trigger, there's a short trigger. And the previous daily, weekly, monthly open high low. Once again, you can see how price cuts through those lines. And we see and a nice little spike there, just trading right off of the indicator, telling you which way the action's happening. And you can see here, there was a short, there was a long, some shorts. This run right here would have probably been a scratch or a loss made up the next time. Right here, you can see that was made up. So there you have it, fellow traders. Filter that because remember, it's not what you trade. It's how you trade it. So it's Thursday. Keep training the banks.